Namaste to my friends in India. Pastor Ray here in upstate New York. It is Tuesday, April 14th. It's around 20 minutes before noon. And I just wanted to say hello to you guys and touch base with you. Let you know what's been going on here. Uh, the state of things in upstate New York. Many people, when they hear of uh, New York, they think only in terms of New York City, where that is the major hub of this pandemic in uh, our nation. Uh, where I live is about 563 kilometers northwest of there. And although there is a lockdown here, uh, like you are experiencing, not as tight, but there's a lockdown, social distancing until the end of April. Schools are closed, sporting events are closed, restaurants are closed, although you could order food online and uh, have pickups, uh, uh, gas stations and things Grocery stores are still opened, but uh, a lot has changed, such as has changed over there with you. And uh, we certainly appreciate your prayers for us. We're praying for you. And you know, everything is changing, but we see in God's Word, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6 For I am the Lord, I change not. And how comforting it is to know that in these changing times that our God is not moved one bit by this virus. I'm sure he is moved with compassion over all of the pain and sorrow and suffering and loss of life and economic struggles, but he is uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're praying for you because Everything that can be shaken is being shaken up. It reminds me of the letter to the Hebrews where it says in chapter 12, verse 25, See that you refuse not him that speaks, for if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And these words, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things which cannot be shaken, such as things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. And God is certainly using this virus to shake things up. He's shaking up people's thoughts, what they believe, what they trust in. And um, we are a part of a kingdom that cannot be moved, that cannot be shaken because it's built upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And we here in the States, we are going through the same kinds of struggles that you are going through socially, economically, emotionally. And this is just something that is worldwide. And yet, the Bible clearly tells us that God is in the throne, on the throne, and He rules and reigns in all of this. And I just wanted to encourage you uh, to keep your eyes on the Lord. It's so easy to get distracted, to get discouraged, to get defeated by seeing the things that are going on and hearing the things that are going on. And as your bank account depletes and as uh, the food resources seem to become less and less, it, it, it is very, very, it can be very, very scary. It can be very, very uh, frightening. And yet many 
of the promises that we read in Scripture. In fact, the number one promise that we read in Scripture from the Lord is fear not. And uh, so while it's good to be informed and to abide by whatever uh, your nation or my nation may be telling us to do, it's, it's wise, the Bible tells us, to submit to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, to do this, the social distancing, and just pray for our leaders. But we need to realize that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Uh, his perfect love casts out fear. And when I'm afraid, my eyes are off the Lord. Jesus said to the disciples in the upper room, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And the same would hold true for you and for me. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus was brought into this earth, in Matthew chapter 1, we read that very, very precious promise. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth his son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And we need to cling on to these promises. Uh, you hear all of the news and you're, you, you can get stirred up, you can get agitated, you can get very, very uh, upset, uh, and you get to the point where you, you just want to get out, <laughs> and you want to see your friends and neighbors and, and hug them, and, uh, and we, 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 th that's just human nature, but we need to do our part to help Alleve this uh, this this pandemic. Emmanuel, God with us. When you find yourself discouraged, defeated, remember, Emmanuel, Jesus is God with us. And when Jesus ascended up to heaven, he said, "Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature." He said, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And what sparked this desire to just touch base with you and to say hello to you and to let you know that I am praying for you and I know you're praying for me, what sparked this the other day was when I was reading in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, where we read in verses 3 and 4, and I want to leave you with this. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. The Bible tells us that God will keep us in perfect peace. And we need to remember that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And that's a peace that passes understanding, which means I've got to forfeit my right to have to understand what's going on. God says he'll keep you and me in perfect peace if our minds are focused on him. So focus on him, my friends. When you are discouraged, we all get discouraged. When you're feeling defeated or down, uh, remember, God's with you. He says if we will commit our ways unto Him, He'll direct us and guide us. And because of what Christ did on the cross for us, all of the promises and all of the prophecies, the promises of God for us are yea and amen, and the prophecies regarding His eternal purpose and plan is going to come to pass. This will come to pass, but the words of God will never come to pass. There is going to be an end to this planet as we know it right now. But for those that are in Christ, there is a new heaven and a new earth where indwells righteousness. And I would encourage you to make it a point to, through whatever media you have, Zoom or WhatsApp, 
Call your friends, call your neighbors, encourage them, pray with them. We're praying for you. And uh, may the Lord just keep you strong in Him, safe in Him, healthy in Him. And I pray that uh, you would just have uh, a special work of God done in your heart and in your life and in your family. Remember, He's still the God that can multiply loaves and fishes. He's still the God that can part the Red Sea. Uh, He's still the God that raises the dead. And He is the same. He changes not. So may the Lord bless you, dear saints, and again, praying for you. And thank you for praying for us. Amen.